What are you doing? Working on your next book? The only reason I ask that is that the last one was such a big smash. Not every day a man knocks a home run his first at bat. <clears throat> I'm busy, Dylan. Hey, I can understand that. Of course you're busy. Tomorrow's your wedding day. And that's why I'm here. It's your wedding day. I want to wish you and Kelly the best. Hey, Sam. I, listen, I was just congratulating Nick. It's going to be his wedding day tomorrow. Tomorrow, only a couple of hours away. Would you excuse me, Nick? My pleasure. <clears throat> what? What are you trying to pull? What are you talking about? Look, we have a deal. You were supposed to sell your percentage to C.C. Capwell? Look, I am talking with C.C. Capwell today. When today? In a couple of hours, the day's over. Look, I said I would talk to the man, and I will. No, it's funny, Dylan, but your word doesn't seem to have much. Matter of fact, I think when I go to the newspaper, I'm going to take one of those little cheating devices that you use among the tables. I read an ad on a matchbook cover. Draw me, and you can win a free scholarship to an art college. And I, I thought I have a pretty good eye. Why not? What is it? What is it? What is it? It's a work in progress. I'm sure that somebody could say it much better. I'm writing my vows for tomorrow. Oh, well, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. You can see the fact I want you to. Now, these are words that you should hear every day, not just on the day that you're going to be married. This is beautiful. It's, it's so hard to put my feelings into words. I mean, uh, when I think about why I'm making this commitment, it really comes down to trust. I mean, there's other people that I've cared for, I suppose, in a way that... I've loved some of them, but I've never had the faith in other human beings that I have in you, Kelly. What's wrong? I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Nikki. Kelly? Hey, wait! Yes. Let it go. What happened? I mean, we were talking about tomorrow, and I showed her the wedding vows that I was writing. And... Sometimes when people are getting married, they can be very unpredictable. There is no exception. Well, there it is, Dad. One of the most extensive private collections in history. Did you say extensive, or did you say expensive? <laughs> You're not getting cold feet about the price, are you? The look on Lionel's face will be worth it. Oh, I can't believe it, Mason. I can't believe it. You actually pulled it off. Well, not quite. Uh, as a matter of payment, my checkbook's in the study. Make it out to Wilson representatives. They're the agents in the transactions. You can wait until tomorrow if you like. I think they know you're good for it. Not a chance. The sooner I pay in full, the sooner I get legal possession. I want uncontested ownership. <laughs> That's seven digits, Dad. Six of them zeros. I know the cost, Mason. I don't think there'll be any question about your ownership, Dad. Few people, if any, would be willing to pay what you're paying for a few thousand dollars worth of forgeries. <laughs> Here you are. Yeah, uh, I came down to watch him set up for the wedding. Been here long? Just a couple minutes. Hmm. I called the hospital twice this morning and I said you didn't come in today. <laughs> No, I didn't. Well, if you weren't at the hospital... Hey, well, Mary, don't cross-examine me, okay? All right, just don't tell me you're at the hospital if you're not, because it's embarrassing when I call well, Mary. Well, then don't call, Mary. Don't, don't check up on me. Hey, Mark, the reason I called was I thought maybe we could have lunch together or something. You know, spend a little time uh, together. Mary, you just don't get it, Dan. What? Spending time together is not what I need right now. It oh, it only makes things worse. Mark, your doctor said that we shouldn't try so hard. He didn't say we could never spend any time alone together again. 
Is this what you think he meant? What? Mary, you don't... You don't mean to do it, but you... You do certain things. You, you say certain things, and all it does is remind me of what I can't give to you. Mark, what are you telling me? That I can't talk to you anymore? I have to go, right? I won't ask you where you're going. That way you won't have to lie to me. I'm sorry. I just need time by myself. Hey. Oh, good. I was just about to go see Brandon. I think he's had enough time alone. He hasn't come out yet? No, I'm worried. I think he's had plenty of time alone. be alone. He's been through too much. Madonna, don't panic. He can't have gotten very far. Cruz, he probably thought that nobody cared about him. That's we, why he ran let's away. Let's not jump to conclusions, all right? What are you doing? I'm going to call downtown and get a couple of cars in the area to check out. Look for him. Don't worry. Yeah, this is Castillo. I uh, want to request uh, two units in the vicinity of Monte Cristo and Crocker who are looking for a missing child. Yeah, he's... Uh, Approximately, uh, well, he's seven years old. He's a male, obviously. He's uh, 40 pounds, about five feet tall, blonde hair, brown eyes. What was he wearing? He had on a sweatshirt that had palm trees on it. And a sweatshirt had, um, with palm trees on it? What color were his pants? Oh, his pants were gray. Maybe gray pants, but a sweatshirt with palm trees. The boy's name is Brandon Capwell. Yeah, he left his home at 528 uh, Crocker Drive uh, sometime in the last two hours. I think we should make this a localized all points. Yeah, it's 555-9865. Five, 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 Thank you. All right, they're going to get right on it, and so am I. You stay here. Cruz, I'm scared. Darling, he'll most probably be back by my nightfall. That's only two or three hours away if we don't find him first. I want to go with you to look for him. I think it's important that you're here in case he comes home. He won't come home to an empty house. I just got him back. I've been looking forward to this day for the longest time. Santana, Santana, he'll be back. He's just a little confused right now. And when he does come back, we'll give him so much love that he won't even think of taking off ever again. I keep a good time. Hello? Hello. I just came down to see how the wedding preparations were going. Yeah, me too. Really? Yeah, it's beautiful here. I've always loved this spot. Yeah, I've noticed it's kind of become your home away from home lately. Mason, don't. Don't, don't ask me what's wrong, all right? Lately, you've been asking me that every time you find me. I don't think I have to anymore. You know I'm here if you want to talk. Thanks. I mean that. Actually, I was just looking for a quiet place to contemplate my good fortune. Your what? You're looking at a man of sudden and intense wealth. Not bad for someone who was disinherited just a few short weeks ago. What happened? I was in the right place at the right time for once in my life. A sale was right for the making and I was the chief negotiator. The commission was substantial. Mason, congratulations. Thank you. Now tell me how to spend it. Oh, you're not going to have any problem with that. No, that's not true. I, all my former extravagance has deserted me. All I can think of to do with it is put it in the bank. Oh, no, wait, wait. Before you do that, you have to treat yourself to something wonderful. Such as? Such as, um, I don't know, a trip. A trip to a faraway place. All by myself? I don't think so. Unless you're that anxious to get me out of town. Well, if you don't want to take a trip, how about uh, a house? You never got yourself a, a permanent place, really, after you left here? I can't see spending all that time and energy on myself. A car. I have one. Have two. It's California. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What would you do with it? Oh, I don't know. Well, you're the one who brought up houses. How about a nice two-story colonial for you and Mark? Garage on the left, flower garden on the right, golden retriever curled up on no. the hearth. No. No. I'm sorry. Lasso apso, is that more like it? Mark and I aren't thinking along those lines. You can't live in the guest house forever. You must fantasize about the future. Hey, I thought we were going to decide how you are going to spend your money. So we were. 
Well, I guess I could take the plunge and start small. Food. Sumptuous meal. Oh, there you go. I don't suppose I could interest you in a late lunch that would extend into dinner? I'm sorry, I keep forgetting that society frowns on asking married women for dates. Since when have you cared what society thinks? Well, I don't, but society's not the only one. Frowning, you haven't been too pleased with it yourself. I'm not frowning now, am I? Why, George, you have a point there. In fact, you're almost smiling. Almost. <laughs> Can't expect a full-fledged grin on an empty stomach, can you? You're accepting my invitation to lunch, aren't you? Sure looks that way from where I'm standing. Well, we better get out of here before you change your mind. inches. Something tells me if an excess inch walked up and bit you, you wouldn't know. Excuse me? Uh, another diet soda for the lady and I'll have another beer, please. <clears throat> so, uh, what do you do besides watch your weight? For one thing, I deal cards at the casino. Oh, I thought I recognized you. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to say anything. I'm... I may lack imagination from now and again, but uh, I didn't want to come up with some line like, haven't I seen you somewhere? Well, as long as you started the conversation, that's what counts, doesn't it? So, um, what's the other thing? What? You said for one thing I deal cards. Is there something else? Hmm, there might be. Sorry, I don't understand. Okay, I've been known to supplement my income with a little fun for profit, if I'm in the mood. How do you know if you're in the mood? Same way you do, I guess. Yeah, well, I feel a little certain mood coming on. Right now? Right now. Hmm, that's a heck of a coincidence. Why don't you pay for these drinks so we can see if our moods want to get better acquainted? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, where? Second coincidence. I just happen to know this great hotel. It's right down the wharf from here. Something wrong? Yeah, something's wrong. What's the matter? You didn't tell me your name. Bobby, what's yours? Call me Doc. Well, what's up, Doc? Do we go to this hotel or don't we? After you. Thanks, Mom. Bye, baby. What was that all about? Pre-wedding mother and daughter tradition? Daddy, please don't be hard on her. She's just trying to help. I'm sorry, kid. Where's Hartley? Nick? No, Dylan. He was here a little while ago. He wanted to talk to me about some business. We haven't seen anyone. Hi, I was just admiring your garden. Hello, Kelly. Which garden is that? Is there more than one? I should have known. Well, I'll leave you two alone. I'm sure you have business to No, care. Kelly, I'd like for you to hear this. <clears throat> Mr. Capwell, I'm about to make you a happy man. You know that percentage of mine in the casino that you were interested in? It's yours, if you'd still like it. Of course I would still like it. Are you sure about this? Oh, yes, I'd like to sell out my shares. Why'd you come to me instead of Lionel Lockridge? Instinct, I guess. I've come to believe that you and I share a certain point of view. I think you and I are two of a kind. Well, I think that's something we could debate, Mr. Hartley, but instead I think I'll just get the papers before you reconsider. You already have papers drawn up? Oh, I knew this day would come sooner or later. I'm just glad it's sooner. I'll be right back. 
Why are you doing this? Well, I weighed my options and it sounded like the safest thing. Kind of like what you did. And what do you mean by that? No, I'm referring to your marriage. I understand you're going to have it outside in that little, uh, uh, outside... Cazibo. Yeah, Cazibo. Yeah. That's, that's nice. It should be very romantic. Oh, by the way, I, I was wanting to buy something very special for a wedding present. Dylan, please don't bother. I already did. It's out in the car. I'll just go and get it. It won't be but a moment. Dylan. Nice place. Don't let the decor fool you. This is a class operation. You'll see. Do you want something to drink? Some wine? Something? No, no, thank you. Oh, I get it. You just want to get right to the good stuff, don't you? Um, listen, uh, do you mind if I have something to say about that? Sure. You can have anything you want. You give me the shopping list, honey. Gosh, you can just disguise the limit. There's a closet full of clothes over there. I can be anybody you want me to be. I can say anything you want me to say. You just have to tell me. No, no, I don't want to tell you what to say or what to wear. I'm not into that, all right? I'm just letting you know what's available. I mean, okay, some guys come up here to talk. That's okay, too. You just want to talk? I didn't come here to talk. I didn't think so. Just let me make the first move, okay? I do want that. You want to be in control? Great. It's your move. pretty. Thank you. My first wife was a, was a blonde, just like you. First wife? You divorced? Yeah, from her. So, do people really ask you to put on costumes? Yeah, I've been a nurse, a stripper, a, a wrestler. <laughs> You're not going to believe it, but this one guy wanted me to be a nun. I mean, can you stand it, a nun? I didn't have the costume or anything, but I just... Boy, when you're ready to make your move, you don't fool around. Don't talk. Don't say anything. Hello, can I help you? No hablo inglés. Ah, deseo tomar algo, señorita. Ah, sí. Sí, una taza de café. ¿Con crema? Sí, crema. Well, if Dr. McCormick comes in, would you ask him to call his wife at Buzz's place? Thank you. You're supposed to be helping me celebrate, you know. How can we do that if you keep checking up on your husband every two minutes? Mason, I, I don't call the hospital to check up on Mark. I'm, I'm just uh, trying to let him know where I am. Well, I'd gladly buy him lunch if you tell me what's going on with you two. Mason. Don't say everything's fine, please. Anything but that. All right, I won't. <clears throat> You're not going to tell me what's wrong either, are you? It's not earth-shaking. I think it's pretty common, probably, for newlyweds to have a hard time adjusting to married life. I don't know what he could possibly have to adjust to. Because it's being the luckiest man on the planet. Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't there a sumptuous meal on our agenda? Yeah, we'll get to that. Just don't use it as an excuse to stop talking, huh? Mason, I will keep talking. I just don't want to turn it into a one-sided examination of my personal life. Well, we could examine my personal life, but it's been so long since I had one. I find that really hard to believe. You're right. Maybe I should order. Hey, uh... Hi. Well, I had my heart set on a waiter cruise, but if you'll take our order... Uh, I'm looking for Brandon, folks. You haven't seen him, have you? No, what's wrong? Well... It's been a rough day for the kid. Uh, he was finally told about Gina, and I guess he didn't know how to handle it. He's at Santana's and he ran off. We don't know Oh, where. no. Okay, how long has he been gone? A couple of hours. We've got cars patrolling the neighborhood, and uh, I'm checking the area on foot. I know this section pretty well. I'll help. Actually, Mason, I'd prefer if you'd stick around here. This is a nice central location. Maybe you could ask people if they came in, if they have seen a, a boy in the vicinity. That would be a big help. All right. I'll uh, tell the station to give out this number and ask for you if anybody has any information. And if you come up with anything, you can call either one of these two numbers. Well, if you find them first, let us know, will you? You bet. Thanks. So, uh, what happens to this stuff, anyway? Gets filed with unclaimed property. Sometimes they auction it off. Do you have any family who might want this stuff? No next of kin listed. 
What about this kid? His pictures are all over. Well, she ain't coming back, so he's better off forgetting her. Decision. You make a very irresistible offer. Well, your percentage is worth a great deal to me. It's my ticket to control the entire operation. Are you going to be making any immediate personnel changes? Well, I think you can still be the manager as of today. As of tomorrow, we'll find out. Excuse me. Well, that was almost painless. Phil, I thought you said you'd never give up your ownership. Well, sometimes we can't keep our resolutions, Kelly. Sometimes in the, the heat of a moment, we do and act in ways we never thought possible. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second, wait a second. You haven't opened up your wedding. Dylan, I don't want it. Look, I know that there are a lot of things that I can't make up for. That's right. So don't even try. But this isn't an apology. I wanted to get you something nice on the most important day of your life. Please, let, let me do that. It is. There's this old woman who owns this beautiful little Irish shop. Now, she said this belonged to a young woman in County Cork in 1880. 1880? That's what she said. Now, at first, I thought it was a lot of baloney. But uh, she swore to me that it was. And then when I saw the name on it, I didn't care if it was 1880 or 1980. What was it, the name? Kelly. Kelly Omar. There's an inscription on the back. When you see it, you won't believe it. To Kelly on this blessed day of marriage. I was looking for something very nice and very special to give you. And, and when I walked into the shop, there it was. It was like it was just waiting for me. Right, what a coincidence, huh? Well, I'd like to think it was more than that. Well, thank you, Dylan. But I, I really don't think I can accept this. No, please, look, you don't have to wear it. All you have to do is keep it as a remembrance that I brought you something besides trouble. You had me worried and I... No, look at me. I was here doing some business with C.C. Capwell. A little matter of uh, selling my interest in the casino. You sold your share? Yeah, it sounded like a good thing to do at the time. Oh, I'd ask why, but I've never understood why you do most things. I'm not likely to start now. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. What's this? Um, it's an uh, Irish antique piece. Wedding present? Mm-hmm. It's lovely. Who gave it to us? Um, Amy, Amy and Brick. Well, how nice of them. You gonna wear it tomorrow? No, no, I, I wasn't planning on it. No. Well, it's magnificent. It would look perfect. I agree. I think you should wear it. Anyway, the next time I see you two, we'll you'll be, be entirely too soon. Congratulations anyway. gone. Do you want to tell me what was going on with you before? Try the nickel for every time this happens. Hey, I don't want to hear it, lady, okay? Well, maybe it's the first time you've been with somebody. Uh, look, I mean it. I don't want to hear anyone's analysis. I'm sick and tired of people making excuses. Look, I just don't want you to feel bad, Doc. You're not the first guy to put a guilt trip on himself at the wrong moment. Hey, maybe it's not me. You ever think of that? Maybe it's you. Me? Yeah, you. You talk a great game about being everybody's fantasy. Well, I'll tell you something, lady. Talk is about the best thing you do. Okay, champ. I hope you get your kicks being a critic, because you ain't going to get it in the sack. I can promise you that. So let's just settle up our accounts and say adios. I'll leave when I decide to leave. You're beyond hope, honey. I mean, there's nothing I can do for you. Nothing. Maybe I should charge you double. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to charge you double. Hey, lady, where I come from, people don't charge unless they deliver. And you didn't deliver. Look, creep. Would you rather I go around town and find out what your real name is? You know, this isn't such a big town. You've been to Buzz's. You've been to the casino. I'll bet if I ask the right people, I can find out your home phone number. Do you think your wife would like to talk to me? I'm not married. Yeah, and I'm just selling encyclopedias here. So pay up, buddy. I told you, I'm not giving you a dime. You're not going anywhere. Just stay out of my way. 
Bobby. Bobby. Oh, dear God. I didn't mean to hurt you, all right? Don't you touch me. I swear to God, I'll get somebody in here faster than Look, you. Look, got out of hand in here, all right? I don't know what happened. You tried to stiff me. That's what happened, you cheap slime. Listen, listen, all right, I'm gonna pay you, all right? You see this? I'm gonna pay. You better believe you're gonna pay. You're gonna pay bad. Listen, I'm sorry. I lost control. I've been having some problems. I don't care about your problems, man. I was... I was really trying to be nice to you. I mean, I did my job. I don't need your grief. Listen, put this on your face. It'll keep down the swelling, all right? What's this? The doc's trying to be like a real doctor? Well, forget it. But I'm going to remember you. And I'm going to make sure that you're going to think twice before you ever swing at somebody because of your personal problems. Now, get out! Look, I already regret for what happened. Get out! I'm not going to prove anything for... You're making a mistake. Okay, all right, fine. Right. It's the way you want it. You're the one that's making the mistake. It was just so beautiful, honey, what you wrote. And suddenly I felt like I wouldn't be able to live up to it. You beautiful, crazy nut. Now, don't you know I just spent all day trying to find the words that would live up to you? And I'll tell you, I didn't even come close. Uh, Nikki, I'm not as perfect as you seem to think. I'm not perfect at all. You are more than perfect. You're the genuine article. 100% pure Kelly. And you've agreed to marry me. I still can't believe it's true. It's wrong. There's something else. I haven't written any of my vows yet. I tried, but I don't know how to describe a commitment like that. And it's so important. You know, it's forever, and how do you write about forever? All you have to do tomorrow is tell me you love me. That's vow enough. But it's not, Nikki. Marriage is more than that. It's what you talked about today. It's about honesty and trust and believing in the person. So add that you believe in me, too. You've already proved it, but go ahead and say it anyway. I do believe in you, and I do love you so much. That is all I ever need to hear. Come on, let's go look at the gazebo. They started decorating it for our wedding. Yeah, I know, I, I saw it earlier. So let's go look at it. Please, we can have our own private uh, rehearsal. There's nobody out there right now. Yeah, um... You, listen, you go, and I'll finish some things upstairs, okay? All right, I will look at it. And then I'm going to the apartment to get my clothes. Now, are you sure it's all right that I spend the night with you here? My family insists, and, and they have Mason's old room all set up for you. Uh-huh, and how far exactly is Mason's room from where you are sleeping? Uh, hey, I think tonight is the night we're supposed to be very proper. Ah, <sighs> well, in that case, I hope this is the last time in our lives that we are very... I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. Bye-bye. Nick, leave? No, he uh, just went out to the gazebo to see how things were coming along. Guess he couldn't wait till tomorrow. He's <laughs> a fine man, kidding. I'm deeply happy for both of you. I'm very lucky he wants me to marry him, Betty. Mm-hmm. He's a lucky one. You're going to make a good wife. I've watched you grow up in the past year. You are ready. I hope so. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready, but you are. Oh. Hey, you know something? I have uh, already bought you a wedding present, but is there anything special you'd like? Yes, there is something. Name it. I'd like for Mother to be at the wedding. It would mean a lot to me, Daddy. Well, honey, I kind of expected her to be there on her own. Yes, but she won't come unless she's invited. You know that. Invite her. Come on. 
It would mean more coming from you. And I think it would make her feel more welcome. Please? Mm. How could I turn you down on your wedding day? <laughs> Thank you. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? <laughs> How much wood could a woodchuck chuck? Come on, this is the easy one. Not for me. All right, try this one. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby... You're just buggy a noodle puss, aren't you? <laughs> I can't help it. But I think this is just about the best pit bath I ever had. Me too. How come food always tastes better when you eat it outside than when you eat it inside? I don't know. I think it's because I'm with you. Everything's better when I'm with you. Here. There was a child missing. I just saw a little boy sitting alone in Keck Park. But you better hurry. I don't know how long he'll be there. Mason? Oh, Bobby. Uh, Bobby, this is Mary. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm not too good. Sorry for interrupting, but you're a lawyer, right? That's right. Oh, gosh. Bobby. What happened think, to you? I think I need a lawyer. I went out with this guy, and I forgot to check his references first. You should have that looked at. That's a very nasty bruise. Yeah, do you, do you want to file assault charges, eh? Yeah, as soon as I find out his real name. Bet I do. I want him behind bars. Fine, but well, what you should do, Bobby, is file a complaint with the police. You don't need a lawyer for that. Yes, I do. I want you to file a complaint. Well, Bobby, my hands are kind of full right now. A family member is, uh, is missing. I have to hang around here for information. I can't go to the police. They know who I am. They'll laugh me right out of the station. They'll say occupational hazard. That's what they'll say. I know it. I see. Do I have to give up my human rights just because I'm trying to make a living? Of course you don't. If I knew any other lawyer, I'd ask. But I don't. You're the only one I know. Ginger says you're really great. Please say you'll help me. Mason, say yes. Whoever did that to her should be behind bars. Thank you for coming. You said it was important. Important to Kelly. What is? She wants you here tomorrow. It's her day. She should have what she wants. Is that just an invitation? I don't think she'd even have the wedding if you didn't show up. And I want to be here more than anything in this world. It's the only thing I could think of since I heard. It's a nice place. It's a beautiful spot. It's going to be a beautiful wedding. Mm-hmm. I hope... I hope, I just hope that they're going to be happy. Well, why shouldn't they be there? Ideally suited. I like Nick. He sees far beyond Kelly's beauty. To what's inside of her. He loves her for all the right reasons. You like him too, don't you? I didn't know my opinion counted. Means a lot to Kelly. All I want for Kelly is for her to finally find some peace. If she can find it with Nick... And it's right with me. Except she's still my baby, and I hate to entrust her to anybody else. <laughs> I must admit I feel the same way myself. I'll tell you what, I'll bring an extra handkerchief. Give me a high sign if you need it. I'll pass it to you secretly. No one will know. I don't cry at weddings. Well, that's not true. I remember a wedding you cried at one time. It was a lifetime ago. Right, and we were different people then. Not very different. Just younger. Thank you for the invitation. Sophia. <laughs> Maybe you better bring that extra handkerchief.
Look, Santana, it hasn't been that long. It's still early. Come on. Cruz, it's dark. It's after nightfall. You said that he'd be back by now. He probably got into somebody's car. He's probably miles away from here already. I don't think already. Brandon would do something like that, do you? Cruz, Brandon wasn't himself. He could do anything. I'm going to go out and look some more. Please. No, don't leave me alone. Let me go with you this time. He could walk through this door on his own any minute. Now, somebody should be here if he does. Yeah. Speaking. Where? Yes, I do. Thank you. Somebody spotted a kid at Keck Park oh. and matches Brandon's description. God, please let it be him. Good chance it is, but you're still going to have to stay here. Why? Because it could be a false alarm. Now, I'll let you know the minute I find something out. Just, just... Hang tough for a, a, a bit longer, just a little bit. Just... I'm sorry. Hey, kid. This is my bench off. I said get lost, you deaf or something? teach you a lesson like my old man. Is that what you want? No. I'll do it. Don't think I won't. No. Kids has got to be taught a lesson. Please, don't. Oh. 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 I thought you'd be here. I thought you'd never come home. Mary, let's not argue anymore, okay? Let's... Let's just go home. Oh! What? Uh, what? What? Oh, nothing. Mark, you jumped a mile when I touched you. What is... Uh, right here, what I, is it? Well, I was... I was walking down one of those narrow hallways up on the surgical level, and, uh... Went around a corner, a gurney's coming the other way, and... Pushed me against the wall, and I uh, ran right into a fire extinguisher. Just a clobber in my shoulder a little more, and I thought... You were at the hospital? Yeah, yeah, ever since I left here. But you know, I'm, I'm starving. Uh, I didn't get any lunch. You want to get an early dinner? Yeah, sure. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm tired. Great, I'll cook. How's that? Fine. Well, let's go. You go on ahead. I'll, I'll be there in a minute. Okay. Don't be too long, though. Okay. Brandon! I've been looking for you, man. Are you mad at me? Of course not. I've never been so glad to see somebody in my whole life. But you did give me a scare. And Santana, too. Next time you decide to go out for a walk, you better tell one of us. Guess you really weren't going for a walk, were you? Let's sit down here for a second, won't you? Come on. This is a pretty nice place to hang out, man. You, you been here before? With my mom. Bet those were good times, huh? Yeah. We used to bring our lunch. It was nice. I bet you wish you could still do that. Well, I wish I could make that happen for you. But I can't. Unfortunately, nobody can change what happened to your mama. Why did she have to die? Well, I guess... God is the only one who knows the answer to that. You see, sometimes he decides to call people up to heaven before we're ready to say goodbye to him. That's what happened with me and my friend Joe, you see. I, I wasn't ready to say goodbye to Joe, but God had other plans for him. I was even mad at God for a while because I didn't like those plans. But you see, I, I realized sometimes it's okay if we don't understand everything. You know, I mean, even though we don't know it, it's like there could be 
a good reason for a bad thing? You know what I mean? No. No, of course not. Words, words aren't. Sometimes the only thing that helps is the tears, man. I know you want to be brave, and I think that's a good thing, but being brave has nothing to do with not crying. I mean, uh, you can cry. You'll still be the same brave boy that your mama loved more than anybody in the world. She would definitely understand. And so would I. meets with your approval. It's darn well better because it's too late to go out and buy anything I think else. It's wonderful. Look how handsome you mm -hmm. look. Now you better go take it off before it gets wrinkled. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stay up all night tonight and watch the sun come up in the morning. Absolutely not. We've got to get a good night's sleep tonight. In separate beds. That's impossible. Hello? Hi, Kelly, it's me. Yes? I was just wondering if anything happened. I, I, I don't know what you mean. Well, I know how much you hate lying to Nick, and then there it was happening all over again. I mean, all he did was ask you where you got the wedding present from, and for the life of you, you couldn't a give him the simple truth? I mean, I'm not criticizing you, I understand. And don't worry, I'm not going to tell him that I was the one who gave it to you. We'll make that another one of our little secrets. Anyway, uh, I want you to rest easy tonight and have sweet dreams. How are you going to leave that girl alone? She's getting married tomorrow, crying out loud. Want to bet? What do you mean? Mark my word, Sam, that is one ceremony that's not going to get past the first two bars of Here Comes the Bride. Who was that? Wrong number. Treasury Secretary James Baker. I'm Carol Marine, also Marlo Thomas, and Dr. Art Ewing's medical update. That's tomorrow morning, on today.